Hello friends. In the last lesson, we learned how to find mean of grouped data using direct method. In this lesson, we shall learn how to find mean of grouped data using assumed mean method. This method is useful when values of observation and frequency is large. This method will help us to calculate mean with simpler calculations. To revise from the last video, we know how to find mean of grouped data using direct method. It is similar to finding mean of ungrouped data. Only difference is that here xi is the midpoint of each class. But when the numerical values of xi and fi are large, finding the product of xi and fi becomes a lengthy and time consuming process. So we have an alternative method for such cases which will save us lot of calculations. It is called assumed mean method. Let us look into that. Let us apply this method for the same example of data on students weight. That is we are given the weight of students of class 8. So in 40 to 45 kg group there are 6 students. The class mark of 40 to 45 class is 42.5. For 45 to 50 kg there are 18 students. So the class mark for 45 to 50 class is 45 plus 50 by 2 that is 95 by 2 which is 47.5 and so on. Our main goal using this method is to reduce x size significantly so that calculation becomes easier. How about subtracting a fixed value from each of these xi? But what will be that value? We cannot take any random value. Here we introduce a term called assumed mean denoted by A. It is a median or middle value of all the class marks. Like here in our example median value of all class marks is 52.5 as they are in the sorted order. So let us take a equal to 52.5 and we would subtract a from each of the xi. So now we subtract the assumed mean a equal to 52.5 from every class mark. That will give us the difference between xi and a that is a deviation of a from each of the xi. We denote it by di. So for the first row d1 equal to 42.5 minus 52.5 x1 minus a which is equal to minus 10 for second row d2 equal to 47.5 minus 52.5 x2 minus a which is equal to minus 5 for third row d3 equal to 52.5 minus 52.5 which is equal to 0 and so on we will now find the mean of the deviations that is d bar which is sum of products fi into di divided by sum of frequencies why mean of deviations because finding d bar is much easier as all the di have small values now so let us calculate fi di for all i for the first row 6 into minus 10 equal to minus 60 6 is the f1 d1 is minus 10 so 6 into minus 10 equal to minus 60 for the second row f2 into d2 which is equal to 18 into minus 5 which is equal to minus 90 and so on so sum of all fidi will be minus 60 plus minus 90 plus 0 plus 15 plus 10 which is equal to minus 125 and sum of all the frequencies will be 6 plus 18 plus 12 plus 3 plus 1 which is equal to 40. So d bar is sum of fi di divided by sum of fi which is equal to minus 125 divided by 40 which is equal to minus 3.125. This is mean of deviations and the mean of actual data that is x bar is equal to d bar plus a. Why? 
remember we removed a from each of the x to calculate the deviation d1 d2 d3 so here we add a back so x bar equal to d bar plus a that is minus 3.125 plus 52.5 minus 3.125 is the d bar we calculated the mean of deviation and 52.5 is the assumed mean we, we took earlier which is equal to minus 3.125 plus 52.5 that is equal to 49.375 so we found the same mean when used direct method or assumed mean method but this assumed mean method is less time consuming as it involves simpler calculations to revise first we find the assumed mean a which is the midpoint of all the class marks then we find deviations from the assumed mean for each of xi that is di equal to xi minus a then we calculate mean of deviations that is d bar this is sum of product of frequency and deviation divided by sum of frequencies then we add this mean of deviation that is d bar with a to get x bar which is the mean of the data it may look complicated at first but these are simpler calculations for each row in the table give it a try bye bye